Hi everyone, welcome back. If this is your first time to my channel, hi, I am Morgan, welcome in. I do this little series called Makeup and Musings every so often on my channel. This is just a chance for me to sit down and chat with you all about some topics on my mind. This week in particular, I am interested in kind of touching base again on my decision that I made earlier in 2020 to switch my whole makeup collection over to only cruelty-free brands. So I just want to revisit that conversation, give you all kind of an update on how that's going and kind of talk about the relationship between cruelty-free brands and inclusivity and affordability, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and jump right into applying some makeup today. For these videos, I'm not usually talking directly about the products that I'm using while I apply them. Um, every once in a while I will, but everything will be listed down in the description box below if you want to check out a product that I'm using. So just a real quick recap for those of you who either are new to my channel or just maybe have missed a little bit of the discussion surrounding um, kind of like my decision to switch over to cruelty-free makeup. I felt really strongly that if I was going to be recommending products on my channel, I just had this deep feeling that I had some sort of moral obligation to be promoting brands and products that align with values that I think are important. So animal rights is something that's important to me. Um, I think that in the cosmetics industry, there's just really no reason at this point for animal testing. Generally, products have already been tested in the past. We know what uh, kind of chemicals and ingredients, etc., are generally safe for uh, cosmetic use. I just don't think it makes sense to keep animal testing on, you know, all of those things that have already cleared testing in the past. So I chose to start the process of switching my whole makeup collection over. I kind of already stuck to a lot of cruelty-free brands in kind of just my own makeup collection prior to YouTube. So um, it's not a huge jump for me, but it is definitely a change. You know, I, I can only pay attention to certain brands and if there are products that are released by another brand that is not cruelty-free, I have to kind of put it out of my mind and I have to try to find replacements for products that I absolutely have loved for years. So it, def it definitely is a little bit of a, a transition still. For example, this Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint that I'm using today is one of my all-time favorites, but uh, Neutrogena is not by any stretch of the imagination cruelty-free. So um, I haven't been able to find a replacement and I'm just gonna use this one up and then um, I just won't have something like this in my collection anymore which to me is not that big of a sacrifice, right? I, I just don't take makeup that seriously, I suppose, that I'm like, well, if I can't find that exact thing, then what am I supposed to do? So just to put your mind at ease, if you're on my channel for cruelty-free content specifically, um, I have no plans of going back on, on my kind of commitment to cruelty-free. That I am still on board with. However, I am trying to figure out exactly where I draw the line. So in my original video, I kind of set forth like my thoughts on brands that sell in mainland China, which requires testing, whereas they're not tested anywhere else in the US or other parts of the world, kind of issues surrounding post-market testing. And truthfully, I'm not that well informed on that. I've been doing my research, but it's certainly hard to find information on it and especially to find it from sources that I, you know, know and trust. So anyway, all of this to say, I'm still leaning heavily into the cruelty-free space, but I wanted to today take some time to touch on some thoughts and opinions that have come up kind of since I started making this switch. And I wanna to specifically touch on two things. And those two things are inclusivity and affordability when it comes to kind of narrowing down my niche here on YouTube and also just in my own makeup life. For inclusivity, what I mean is that um, not all brands have wonderful shade ranges. And by limiting myself to only brands that are cruelty-free, I then also am li limiting myself to brands that are cruelty free and also have a shade range that I feel like is at least moderately reasonable because I'm trying to make 
product recommendations to a wide audience. And I want to be as inclusive as possible when I'm making those recommendations. So now I've narrowed down the brands I can use from just cruelty-free to cruelty-free and also things that I feel ethically okay with recommending and brands that I think are trying to do their best when it comes to shade ranges and um, kind of availability to a wide audience. That's, that's tricky, right? Because I am not a professional makeup artist and I am in a skin tone range that is almost always available in you know, like every brand. And so I am not necessarily super well equipped to be making the judgment calls on kind of like what is inclusive. Um, you know, I can use some common sense and say like, okay, well, if I could theoretically wear like every shade in a range, then clearly that is not an inclusive shade range. But when it gets beyond that, it's, I'm not exactly like well-versed or professionally trained in like different undertones and coloration in skin tones, particularly deeper than mine. So I can always do my best and that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to be very clear on my channel about which products have good shade ranges and which ones I feel like are really lacking, but that's not like a flawless system either, right? Because again, as I said, I'm not the most well equipped to be kind of making those judgment calls. And I also want to recognize that by choosing to only support cruelty-free brands, I might be eliminating brands that I would love to support for other reasons. So for example, right now, Fenty is sort of on like the line between whether some people think they're cruelty-free or not. And I haven't totally made up my mind on that yet, but when they release new products, it catches my eye every time. And I think they're a huge industry leader for trends and uh, techniques and products in the beauty space. It's also a black owned brand, so I would love to support that. But because I feel unsure about their cruelty-free status, I'm not supporting them. And that can alienate some people uh, from my channel because they have consistently inclusive shade ranges, not only for like foundations, concealers, but also for things like eyeshadows and highlighters and blushes and all sorts of things that are really hard to find good shade ranges in. So essentially what I'm saying is I know that some people do not have the same privileges that I do as a white woman in the beauty space. So I can pretty much go to any brand I want and find a product that will work well enough for my skin tone in every category. So like I said, not just foundation, but also like highlighter, bronzer, etc. There's almost always a shade that will work great for my skin tone. And so I don't have to be as selective about what brands I support and purchase from. But now that I'm on YouTube, it's really, really brought to my attention the fact that that is a privileged perspective to be able to limit myself to cruelty-free brands only. Some people of color feel that they can't limit themselves on other ethical principles, for example, cruelty-free or clean beauty, because there just aren't shade ranges and products for them in brands that fit into those categories. And so they have to use what works for them. And I think that that's important and arguably more important than animal rights. I mean, human rights have to take precedence. And so um, I am going to do my absolute best to kind of adhere to a rule of doing my research the best I can and uh, trying to look into shade ranges, products, treatment of uh, people of color who work for a brand. I have been sitting here packing on this bronzer while I'm kind of rambling for so long. This is the Nabla Skin Bronzing in Ombra. And if you saw my recent um, like first impressions video, this is like a mystifying product to me. It's just like, it's definitely adds color to my skin but it just like picks up no product on my brush and it's, I don't know, I'm sort of skeptical. I think I got a bad batch or something because it's a very, very weird thing to apply to my face. Anyways, so that's my very kind of like uneducated first attempt at a conversation about this topic and the fact that you can't act like 
or I should say I cannot act like cruelty free and um, inclusivity and affordability, etc. are all just silos, right? Like they're their own topics and I don't need to talk about kind of the intersectionality of those when that is absolutely not the case. I mean, by suggesting and recommending certain brands over others, I am prioritizing certain qualities and ethical considerations over others. And cruelty-free is something that's really, really, really important to me. But I just want to also do my due diligence to make sure that anyone who wants to come watch my channel will feel like I'm making recommendations for everyone, not just for people who look exactly like me and will have the same ease of access and um, shade range finding as I will. So another thing that I think is super important for me to consider as I kind of recommend products and brands on my channel is affordability. Just as I said with inclusivity, um, not all cruelty-free brands are necessarily the most affordable brands out there. So I want to make sure I'm, you know, providing content and suggestions to people that will be helpful not only from the perspective of picking makeup but also making sure that those recommendations I'm giving are affordable for people at a wide range of price points. I know that for a lot of people makeup is not as much like it is for me where it's something fun that I enjoy spending my money on. Um, for some people they're just looking for a recommendation for the cheapest thing that'll get the job done and do it well right so i want to be really cognizant of the fact that people are going to be coming to my channel with a wide range of kind of different financial situations and i just need to kind of acknowledge the fact that these three things so kind of cruelty free a status inclusivity and affordability are not they're not silos. They are not existing independently of each other. There's a relationship between each of these and every single individual person is going to have to make decisions that are right for themselves. But I want to be doing the best I can on my channel to promote the values that I think are really, really important. And I will be sticking with cruelty free, but I also really want to try to continue to have content for everyone who wants it on my channel. I truly cannot think of a single brand that is cruelty-free, affordable, and has a very, very inclusive shade range in every single one of the products they sell. I'm sure they are out there. Um, in fact, I think ColourPop gets pretty close. Um, pretty, pretty dang close, for example. That's just one that came to mind. But then as soon as I think I've come up with an answer, for example, like ColourPop, I am reminded that there are other things I care about too. So uh, for example, um, what just reminded me of this is the fact that today I am using this absolutely stunning quad from Aether Beauty, the Ametrine Mini Crystal Palette. It's unbelievably stunning. And they are big into sustainable packaging and ingredients that are, you know, considered, quote, non-toxic, but that's a really tricky realm that I truly don't want to get into. But regardless, the sustainability aspect is another thing that's really important to me. I care a lot about that. I was an environmental science major in uh, my un for my undergrad degree. It's just something that I strive for in most aspects of my life, and inherently, makeup is wasteful. I mean, there's packaging, there's shipping, there's the you know, trial and error process of creating products. There are brands like Aether Beauty that are doing their best to mitigate that. So their entire packaging is recyclable. You can choose to pay when you check out on their website to, you pay like an extra 30 cents or something for them to offset the cost of the carbon of shipping your products. So, uh, you know, they have some options in line to help mitigate the inherent wastefulness of the cosmetics industry. But here's the deal. As soon as I throw something like sustainability into the mix, I am back to square one of not being able to think of a single brand that meets all those criteria. So now, now my criteria would be cruelty-free, inclusive shade range, affordable, and also some sort of eco-consciousness involved. And Aether probably meets 
three of those. So they have a pretty inclusive shade range. They meet the cruelty-free requirement for me. And then they also meet the eco-conscious requirement, but they are not affordable by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, their palettes are around the prices of like a Natasha Denona midi palette and there are not as many shadows. It's very, very pricey. So I just cannot come up with a single brand recommendation that I would make that meets all of my criteria. I'm always so drawn to this like deep purple in this corner, but I kind of want to keep things lighter this week. So I think I'm just going to go in with the shimmers right away and then I might just do some liner or something with this guy. So all of this rambling is essentially leading me to a place where I'm feeling like I need to reaffirm my commitment to the cruelty-free space. That is something that is really, really important to me. I think it's just a 100% unnecessary aspect of the cosmetics industry at this point, and I don't want to be supporting unnecessary animal cruelty. But I kept having this nagging feeling after kind of finishing up that video and then continuously mentioning in further videos that, you know, I, I focus on cruelty-free content. I had this kind of back of my nagging feeling that I had not fully addressed kind of my thoughts and feelings on the fact that I'm cruelty-free on my channel. So, um, anyway, these are my thoughts. Uh, I do feel like I got some of my point across here. I hope that I did. Um, I'll do a quick recap at the end after I kind of do my lip products here, just because it's impossible for me to keep talking and do my lip products at the same time. So um, I am going to hop off, do my mascara and my lips, and then I will be back to kind of give some final thoughts that are hopefully a little more uh, easy to follow than this was. Alrighty, so I just wanted to do a really quick, concise wrap up of kind of where all my thoughts lie after this discussion. So first and foremost, I wanna emphasize that cruelty-free status is still something that's extremely important to me in cosmetics. I don't see animal testing as a necessity for the majority of cosmetic products. And for that reason, I'm not willing to support a f uh, brands that, that continue to kind of use that outdated method and unnecessary uh, cruelty to animals in their development process. But the catch-22 of being cruelty-free is that it limits the brands that I can purchase from. And those limitations interact with other things that are also really important to me in the cosmetics industry in complicated ways. So the two or three big ones here for me are inclusivity and affordability. Those are kind of my top two priorities in conjunction with cruelty-free status. And then if at all possible, I also really want to try to prioritize any brands that focus on sustainability or eco-friendly practices as much as possible as well. So essentially, I just wanted to sit down and chat about kind of the intersectionality of all of these different factors and kind of re-solidify my thoughts on cruelty-free, but not putting it in its own bubble, its own silo, really acknowledging the fact that there are so, so many factors that influence our purchasing decisions and that what's right for me will not always be what's right for everyone else. And I totally get that. I don't want to shame anyone for making the decision that's best for them. So thank you so, so much if you've made it to this point in the video. I really appreciate your support. Please feel free to leave comments down below with any thoughts or opinions on these topics as well. I would love to hear how you all feel about kind of all of these different related topics that are really complicated and hard to grasp. So please feel free to leave comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video today, I would also really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.